Welcome back. In this last video, folks, what I want to talk about is repetition to proficiency. Now, it's important to emphasize that when I say repetition to proficiency, it's not about doing the same situation with the same exercise over and over again, although that can be part of it. What we're really talking about is bringing all the information together. Remember, we have pertinent academics, contain the startle factor, planned approach to recovery, recall technology. Repetition to proficiency is repeatedly implementing that strategy to resolve the upset situation towards recovery. So BEST is a wide variety of scenarios where the pilot is put in a situation where they need to mentally understand what's going on, contain their overreaction, their startle factor, understand I need a plan and not react, and then use recall technology to implement the steps and process. Now remember, the, the plan strategy, uh, it doesn't have to be a certain thing. Uh, we, like I said before in one of our last videos, is that we, we essentially apply the core elements of what's called the All Attitude Upset Recovery Checklist, which is a strategy which you can have a wide variety of situations, as long as you're not in spinning flight, uh, to be able to now take this wide variety of situations and by having a planned process is to start resolving it down towards recovery so the airplane is recovered, under control, coordinated, and ideally getting away from the ground at the best rate of climb or at least leveled off. So uh, I think that is what really repetition of efficiency is about is because pilots in these situations, we, as we've understood from our previous videos, and we see every single day teaching upset recovery training, is that they are overwhelmed, they are panicked, they want to fix it right now, that fight or flight mechanism, and unfortunately, very often that is the wrong thing to do, and what we need to realize with people going through training, as I said previously, is the safest they are is the day they leave, but it's not just about knowing what to do or how to do it, but it's having the mental discipline to take effective action in a life-threatening situation to have a strategy, have a plan to resolve this airplane towards recovery. So repetition proficiency often, as opposed to being a single scenario, is applying the overall strategy to a wide variety of different scenarios, but having the calm, cool, collected approach of taking action. Because if we can get them to the point where they're calm, cool and collected in a training environment, then they're going to be sitting on the edge of the seat excited, but having that mental discipline to use a trained response, not an instinctual response. And that is really key, is to replacing instincts with training. And that takes a lot of effort. Unfortunately, uh, if we don't have that exercise, if we don't have that practice at containing our emotions, containing our adrenaline, containing our overreaction, it becomes very difficult to function in that environment. Which is why, in our opinion, right now, giving current resources uh, in the industry is one of the limitations of simulator training. And as I said before, we believe that simulator training is a very valid resource for teaching procedures. But the one thing it doesn't have, and it doesn't matter how elaborate the simulator becomes, whether it perfectly represents the performance of the airplane, is that it still will be a simulator and pilots will know that. Now, it doesn't mean we're advocating putting people in, in threatening situations. However, in real aircraft training, by having a very safe airplane that's up there that can, that can accommodate uh, errors by the pilot if they do make mistakes, is the pressure is on. They are truly in the best situation we found to be able to practice that strategy of containing that mental overreaction, that physical reaction, the physiology and psychology of being threatened and having that chance. Doesn't really matter the type of vehicle they're in. Uh, now it's important to have a safe airplane obviously, but the vehicle they're in is secondary really to A, being safe and also C, B is to make sure that they now can practice, they can repeat implementing their strategy of resolving an upset towards recovery while keeping themselves calm. So that that's really important way to summarize up the process, summarize the process. So academics to, to finish off the video for everybody today, uh, you'll notice that I haven't got into specifics of exactly what to teach and how to teach it, but the overall design of an upset recovery training program absolutely has to address the core elements that I discussed in this presentation. Quick summary, academic training, 
needs to deal with an understanding of what's going on in an upset. They have to understand what the threat is by looking at statistics, understanding that loss of control in flight is the leading cause of fatalities and hull losses in commercial aviation and equally as threatening in non-commercial aviation. Once they have that knowledge of, of, of how lethal it is, going through uh, understanding the causes of upsets, which is going to build their ability to recognize and hopefully avoid many of these situations that can be created through just inappropriate decision making in the cockpit, and then understanding the fundamental aerodynamics. Once that knowledge is in place, that alone gives a measure, a measure of safety just through awareness, and that's an important part of upset recovery training. From that point, getting practical training is really, really important. And again, the initial stages of that training, it doesn't have to be in a real airplane. It can be in a simulator with motion, without motion. We prefer with motion, but that's just our opinion. Anything we can do to enhance the startle factor, in our opinion, is important. So when they get to their training, practice controlling startle factor as opposed to just turning on a computer or saying, OK, here's the situation to recover and expect an immediate reaction really have them take the opportunity just take a second to keep themselves under control see the situation and implement a strategy for recovery which of course is the next step a planned approach to recovery and then how do they recall that how do they take those actions what many will find who have just for example done simulator training is they find that pilots are actually pretty good at recovery they, they've had the academics they're calm cool collected they can kind of figure things out on the simulator well do i need to reduce angle of attack do i need to use the roll tool to for example get the nose down nose high do i need to make a power decision and that's great and wonderful however we're here to tell you from first-hand experience those exact same pilots that are in the simulator they can analyze and figure out a situation in a real situation, even in the training environment, in an aerobatic airplane, or doesn't matter what kind, is that mental process is at least cut in half. They don't have the ability to analyze very well. They want to react. It's very threatening. So having an opportunity of somehow getting training to practice containing the startle factor, implementing a planned approach, using recall technology to take effective action is really, in our opinion, a critical area of, of really being safe in upset recovery situations. One thing to keep in mind as we finish up this video series is that an upset recovery have a plan. Unfortunately, there are no guarantees. A certain strategy or plan may not always apply in all situations, so we have to be able to think dynamically. A wide variety of things can happen. We may have to just do our best to recover the airplane and hope that it's not a situation either due to control failure or perhaps inattention to ice accumulation or whatever it might be that causes a situation to be unrecoverable recoverable, but having a plan and understanding that proper upset recovery training focuses on recognition and avoidance in the vast majority of, majority of cases is really what's going to keep you safe. However, with the proper training, with the proper procedural training focusing on the core elements, should you get beyond the envelope or experiences you have every day, have a plan of how to get out of it because probably the, one of the biggest things is, is that pilots have no idea no, have, haven't a clue where to start even after thorough academic preparation simply due to the stress of the threat and because of the threatening nature of the situation. So uh, final words if I was going to offer anything is make sure your, your training provider understands uh, these messages that we're giving. Make sure that they have an ability to address each of those critical areas. Make sure that there's a, a, a way by which they can provide your pilots or yourself the tools to be able to function in a life-threatening situation effectively to resolve the airplane to recovery. And understanding that no matter what level of training that we have, there happen, whether it's technology failure, control failure, uh, delay and recovery, where they well, our job as pilots is to be prepared. The vast majority of these, majority of these situations that claim lives and, and aircraft crashes uh, on an annual basis can be avoided and can be recovered with the proper training. So as pilots, it's our responsibility to be prepared, to be able to take effective action and be safe. Thanks for taking your time to watch these videos. I'm BJ Ransbury, President of APS Emergency Maneuver Training, and we hope to someday have the opportunity of meeting with you personally and flying with you. Have a great day.